I'm hot foiling anything and everything I can find these days. And if I'm being honest, you will too after you watch this video. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and welcome back to my channel. Let's jump right in. Today we are making stationary style holiday cards using hot foil and heat embossing. Two simple techniques that you will love because if you are like me, I know you already love the heat embossing technique. Here's my Glimmer hot foil system from Spellbinders. I've turned it on and I've already placed two Glimmer hot foil plates on top to start heating them up. Now these come from two different sets. One is a happy holiday sentiment and another one is a pretty shape that looks like a snowflake. I did position these keeping the final card size in mind, which is A2, so four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I used the grid lines on the heating pad to align my dies. I'm using matte gold foil for my projects today and I will be foiling on light blue cardstock, but there are of course lots of other foil colors out there for you to play with and you can certainly foil on other colors of paper. You can foil on white, on black, and you can also foil not just on paper, but that's something we'll talk about in a future video. I've cut my foil to size and I covered my foil plates. I placed my paper on top. Again, I made sure to align it with those grid lines on the heating pad. And now I just need to grab my shims and complete this sandwich to send it through my platinum die cutting machine to foil. By the way, here is my thin shim. And as you can probably tell, I already foiled it by accident. That's not a problem, not a huge deal. You'll see me foil this plate again in this video. And you can foil it, and as you do foil, you probably will. Now, it will not affect your projects. You can also easily remove that foil from the plate using an eraser or undo. Now, another thing to point out, you'll notice I have a green cardstock shim here. I found that it helps me to get better foil transfers, especially when I'm using glimmer plates that have more solid space to them, like that Happy Holidays plate. And if I use a shim, I also get a more of a foiled and letterpress look. You do have to be careful with these extra shims as adding too many shims will result in overfoiling and that's not always easy to fix. Now, if you're watching this and you're clueless about what I'm doing here and what this is, if this is your first video ever that shows the Glimmer Hot Foil machine, I suggest you watch Spellbinder's introductory videos to learn more about this machine and about what it can do. I have links for you below in my video description, so check those videos out after you've finished watching this one. Don't leave just yet as the most fun part is still ahead. So I brought my platinum die cutting machine and I'm now simply sending this entire sandwich through the machine to foil. So even though I'm sending it through the die cutting machine, I'm not actually die cutting anything. I'm just applying pressure to foil. Do go slow here. I like to go back and forth and then bring the platform back into the docking station and dock it so that it remains hot for my next hot foil project. Here, I once again have foil on my thin shim no surprise, a part of that snowflake foiled my shim. And like I said, that's no big deal. So don't panic if you foil your plate by accident. That's totally okay. Time for the magic moment and voila, absolutely gorgeous. And I did get that beautiful letterpress effect here too, where my foiling is actually recessed in the paper. The cool thing about it, the back side of the paper is completely flat, so it's not like embossing and debossing. It's very different. Now, I want to add more snowflakes to my background. I don't actually have any more snowflake glimmer plates. What I do have is a ton of snowflake dyes in my stash. So I'm going to use those to add additional foiled images to my background. That's right, I'm going to foil with my thin dyes. Not going to die cut, not emboss, but foil. And yes, you can foil with your thin etched dies, not just Spellbinders dies, but dies you have from Simon Says Stamp, dies you have from other companies, any thin dies you can try and foil with them. Just pause for a moment here and let that information sink in. Think about all of those dies that you have in your stash that you can try and foil with. It's like a whole new world of possibilities. So here I'm just planning the snowflake placement on my panel and I'm making sure that I have these dies exactly where I want them on my card. And again, I'm using that grid on the heating pad and that helps a ton to align everything in place. 
Again, I'm going to press the timer button to heat up my dyes. And while that's happening, I'm going to cut the foil and prep everything for the second round of hot foiling. You probably noticed that some of my snowflake dyes still have the negatives inside. I didn't clean them. That does not affect the foil result as far as I can tell. It foils beautifully regardless if your dye is clean from the negative die cuts or not. I'm just going to speed this part up as here I'm doing the exact same thing to foil the snowflakes and bam! Fabulous, gorgeous, beautiful foiled results. Now who would have thought that this was possible with regular dyes? I didn't foil in one or two places as my foil shifted a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Nobody's going to notice that. I do have just a little bit of overfoiling here and to clean that up, I'm going to use my pencil eraser. Sometimes I need to use my sanding eraser. Sometimes a regular eraser is enough to remove that excess foil. We already have a pretty good design, but I want to add some stamping on top of it. I've already picked two sentiments. One reads, wishing you, and the other one says, all I want for Christmas is you. And I'm stamping one below and one above my foiled happy holidays. And I'm going to gold heat emboss them with the help of my heat tool. Now, I will say this, that you need to do your heat embossing after you've done your foiling. I haven't really tested this, but I think that if you heat emboss first and then go to foil, the Glimmer Hot Foil machine will remelt your embossing powder and it will mess up your entire heat emboss design. So make sure you do your foiling first and then you do heat embossing. And look at this beauty. Now that there's heat embossing in gold and foiling in gold, you can really see how the foiling is letter pressed, really, how it is recessed in the paper. Now, my panel warped a little bit from the heat embossing. That's no surprise. So to overcome that, I've added a ton of double-sided tape onto my card base, and I'm going to adhere my panel in place. So here I have a simple yet stunning one-layer card. I'm going to add some jewels. I really love these embellishments lately. These jewels are from Pretty Pink Posh. They come in many, many colors. Here I'm using gold and I'm just scattering them around my card over the foiled images and also next to them. Cards are done. On the screen, there's a link to a playlist with all of my Glimmer Hot Foil Machine tutorials. More videos are coming. Subscribe now not to miss any new card making tutorials. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.